of behaviorism. According to Merriam-Webster, psychology is the science and study behind the human mind and its behavior. For modern psychologists, this field covers many methods of study, but for today, we're going to be focusing on one specific field, the last word of that definition, behavior. Studies in understanding observable behavior and naturalistic theories stem from the field of behaviorism, an area of psychology that was built on the principles and experiments of those such as Ivan Pavlov and our topic today, John Brodus Watson. No, not that John Watson. No, not that one either. Yeah, that's the one. This man's career, from tormenting babies to his extensive studies in animal research, was filled with remarkable discovery, all of which we'll examine in just a minute. But first, let's start from the beginning. John Brodus Watson was born on January 9, 1878 in Greenville, South Carolina to a dysfunctional home life. Watson's absent father, Pickens Butler Watson, who permanently left his home when Watson was 12, took his toll on the psychologist-to-be, and it led to Watson being a violent and unruly child and student, quote, marked by indifference to schoolwork and brushes with the law, end quote. Watson's family followed a strict Baptist faith, and even named him after a prominent religious figure. Watson, like with his parents, had a disconnect from his childhood culture, and rebelled against not only his family's traditions, but his religion. Despite his unfortunate upbringing, Watson attended college at Furman University, found in his hometown of Greenville, South Carolina, from which he graduated early with a master's degree in psychology in 1898 at only 21 years old. Watson's education continued at the University of Chicago, where he would begin to develop his own theories and ideas on psychology. In order to pay for tuition, Watson maintained several jobs, one of which being an animal caretaker under H. H. Donaldson, a University of Chicago neurology professor. This early exposure to animals is what most likely led to Watson's use of animal subjects in various trials later on in his life, including species of monkeys, birds, and rodents. Ongoing experiences at the University of Chicago opened Watson's eyes up to criticisms and interpretations of subcategories of psychology, as Watson began to question the validity of structuralism and functionalism, and instead became more interested in the work of biology professor Jacques Loeb, and how animal brains and actions could relate to those of humans. As a hard-working student and intelligent mind, Watson graduated from the University of Chicago in 1903 with a Ph.D. in psychology, staying at the campus until 1908 to instruct classes. At this point, Watson expanded his influence in the psychology community. He began to write annual pieces in the Psychological Bulletin beginning in 1906. The Carnegie Institute gave him an opportunity to study native species of bird in the Tortugas in Florida specifically focusing on the learned behaviors of baby birds from their parents. Some of Watson's other studies with the animal kingdom also covered subjects such as adaptation to new conditions, reaction time, and imitation. His studies garnered extra attention from educators, as Watson, in 1907, was appointed lead professor in comparative and experimental psychology at Johns Hopkins University. Around 1907 to 1908, in his time between jobs at the University of Chicago and John Hopkins, Watson began to stray away from typical values of his field. He's quoted saying that psychology is meant to be, quote, an objective experimental branch of natural science, end quote. The previous subfields of psychology, including structuralism and psychoanalysis, focused on streams of consciousness and mostly unobservable raw reactions towards different stimuli. Watson believed that the reliance on this internal psychology was unnecessary, as he'd been studying the simple lives of animals for years prior, without having to delve into the complicated nature of each species. He discussed his position on the shift to a more behavior-based psychology to his co-workers and fellow psychologists, but he was turned away and dissuaded from the subject. Despite his disappointment, Watson continued to work on a theory for behavior-based psychological study, adapting his work in animal studies for humans, starting to study the minds of young children and their development through operation. This research began to add concepts of human adaptation and reactions to developmental influences through a child's environment. After almost a decade in college for the education and research of psychology, Watson's rebellious nature was coming out again, and he began to create a new field for himself, rejecting the years of experience he'd been taught to follow. Watson didn't publicly release his new studies until he published Psychology as a Behaviorist Views It in Psychological Review in 1913. The piece was one of a few lectures that Watson gave at Columbia University on his idea of behaviorism. 
In the lecture, he argued behaviorism as the new way to study psychology and following this trend would lead to the acceptance of psychology as a natural science. He states that introspection and more extraneous concepts about the way the mind works were outdated methods that led to unreliable experimentational results. Watson goes on to say that extreme changes needed to be made to the study of psychology and education and experimentation. This early idea of behaviorism was purposed more to revitalize the field as opposed to creating a method of experimentation. Watson's book Behaviorism, written a few years later in 1924, defines behaviorism as, quote, a natural science that takes the whole field of human adjustments as its own. It is the business of behavioristic psychology to predict and control human activity. This shift from a revolution in psychology to recognition by Watson that behaviorism can exist as its own form of psychology cemented behaviorism and Watson as essential points in the development of psychology and how psychology is practiced today. Now I'm going to show you a clip from Crash Course Psychology, where Hank Green does an excellent summary of John Watson's most famous experiment, the Little Albert Experiment. For us scholars of psychology, we can define learning as the process of acquiring, through experience, new and relatively enduring information or behaviors. Whether through association, observation, or just plain thinking, learning is what allows us to adapt to our environments and to survive. In fact, the research that's gone into how we're conditioned by our environments has helped shape the science of psychology from a still kind of subjective thought exercise into the more rigorous discipline we know today. And it starred some of psychology's most notable and often controversial figures, including Pavlov, B.F. Skinner, and that guy who trained kids to be terrified of furry animals. Classical conditioning shows how a process like learning can actually be studied through direct observation of behavior in real time without all those messy feelings and emotions. Behaviorist psychologists like Pavlov's younger American analogs B.F. Skinner and John B. Watson also embraced the notion that psychology was all about objective, observable behavior. His most famous and, yes, controversial experiment, Watson conditioned a young child, dubbed Little Albert, to fear a white rat. Maybe that doesn't sound so bad, but he accomplished this by pairing the rat with a loud, scary noise over and over, and then demonstrated that the terror could branch out and be generalized to include other furry white objects like bunnies, dogs, or even fur coats. So yeah, that would not fly today, obviously, but Watson's research did make other psychologists wonder whether adults, too, were just holding tanks of conditioned emotions, and if so, whether new conditioning could be used to undo old conditioning. So, an 11-month-old baby dubbed Little Albert was exposed to various white fluffy animals. Then, Watson played a loud and scary noise whenever the baby reached for the animal. Watson eventually made the baby cry on visual contact with any of the animals, and even sights such as Santa's fluffy white beard scared the poor child. The experiment demonstrated classical conditioning, or respondent conditioning, where a reaction is paired with a stimulus, in this case crying with a sight of white and fluffy creatures or objects. With this information, Watson proposed that given a dozen healthy infants, he can train any one of them to become a doctor, artist, lawyer, or even a thief, regardless of their talents, tendency, or ancestry. Despite its advancements for behaviorism theory, this experiment was heavily controversial, as the trials on repetition have shown to give emotional distress, traumatic experiences, or irrational phobias. The original child, Little Albert, even died at six years old, assumingly from the experiment's torture, which led to the major regulation of experimentation a few years later. John Watson published more than 35 books, papers, and studies on his theory of behaviorism. After having an affair with a lab assistant, Watson was fired from Johns Hopkins University, pursuing a career in advertising instead, where he maintained a lucrative business until he passed away. He received a gold medal from the American Psychological Association in 1957 for his extensive research and contributions to the field, as well as his revolutionary take on the human mind in the form of behaviorism. At the age of 80, John B. Watson died in New York City on September 25, 1958. I hope this presentation informed you on John Brodus Watson. I've been Nicholas Asermano. Thanks for watching.